Yes, I have 22 eternal, and I mean eternal, wake stones. This is not a bug, and I did not use any exploits, but I found a really cool way to make them and many other items in Dragon's Dogma 2. DD2 has so many in-depth mechanics and fun combat that you can waste so many hours just focusing on any one feature or just exploring. Well, I decided to spend all my gold and sat at a bench for weeks on end to make forgeries of almost everything. Hey, I'm Caveman. Feel free to jump along on the timestamps below to a chapter for a specific item or strategies as you please. Otherwise, I'm going to start off by showing you how to unlock the forgery, meet Abraham, and then I'm going to jump into one of the cool side quests that uh, forgeries can make a huge difference in. I'm going to show you every forgery I've made, talk about little tips and strategies for each one. Beware, there are three spoilers in there for uh, lore and game-wise. Uh, I do give a little warning. Feel free to just jump to the next chapter so you can skip over that if you're not interested in the spoilers. And then I'm going to wrap it up by giving some uh, overall strategies you can use that are both good in early game and late game uh, that are just really, really cool. So let's go ahead and jump into how to find this vendor. You can find him at Checkpoint Rest Town. You can easily get there from an Oxcar from Vernworth or from Bakbatal. Uh, but yeah, you just pop over to Checkpoint Rest Town. Most of you should have, probably already have that locked. You're going to get off your ox car right there. Just walk to the back corner. You'll be approached by an NPC. Or probably already did. You might have forgot it if you haven't done this quest, uh, side quest. But uh, it'll ask for the Jade Orb. And this is actually who you have to talk to to find that orb. But uh, you'll talk to him. This is his scrap store. You can buy stuff from him. Beware, some of his stuff is fake. Uh, so don't, uh, like the Fairy Stone is actually an example here. Don't buy that. It is useless. Uh, at least I haven't found a good use for it. Um, but anyways, so that's the potential there. But here's your Jadeite Orb. Here's the On the Transference of Souls 2. That's also going to be important for later on. Um, but yeah, and then you can request forgeries. And this is what's really cool. You can go in here and make a forgery of any of these. Now, when I say forgery, it's not always a forgery. Sometimes it can be the exact same item. And that is what I did with the Eternal Wake Stones. That's why I have so many. It's actually a one-to-one, -one, really, really cool uh, thing there. Uh, but sometimes it's totally fake, like the Wake Stone. A, a standard Wake Stone is actually just a Woke Stone. Absolutely crazy. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But uh, you're going to pay a fee, and sometimes this fee is crazy, like 24000 That is a ceiling file uh, vial. If that would work, that'd be crazy. Uh, but that's another one that doesn't, unfortunately. But there's a whole bunch of other cool ones, uh, and we'll go through those in just a second. But you basically just get to make a forgery. And so I've gone through and tried to either grab one of each kind of class, like material, uh, valuables, stuff like that, to see what would work, what wouldn't, um, and just really try to play around. It's really cool, and there's probably some objects I've missed or some end game items I haven't gotten to yet, so feel free to comment below if you've done one that you found it works and it's got a really cool use case. Love to see it if I missed it. But uh, let's jump into the side quest that really starts this off. And so that's looking for a jade-eyed orb. I mentioned one guy will immediately approach you. There's another guy in this city that will also approach you, and it's just sitting on the counter. They are completely blind, and it's, it's obviously just right there. But whatever, we're going to get some easy money out of them. Uh, and so you have to give it uh, to one of them, or you can make some forgeries. And my first time playing this, I actually just gave it to them, and I'm like, why didn't I make a forgery? And then I'm like, why didn't I make two? But basically, you pay for the forgery. You do have to wait some period of time. So I just go into this bench right here. You have to wait a full day. So I just wait four cycles real quick. And you can also go down and just wait for the next ox cart. That's a whole nother way you can quick. And then it's a full day, one cycle. Uh, but then you'll just have to wait at, at Abraham Bush for a second uh, longer because it actually goes too quick sometimes and he won't be ready because it takes him literally a full day. It's crazy how they set that up. But anyways, you're going to receive that imitation Jedi orb, then make a second one real quick. Uh, it only costs 600 gold the second time. So that's a, a big benefit. But then you're going to go to the first uh, merchant guy that was looking for it. You're going to give it to him. This guy needed it to survive. You probably shouldn't do what I do here, but I'm a collector. I'm a hoarder. I want all of the the, the unique objects, so I'm going to keep it and uh, give him invitation. So I do that. He gives us 3,000 gold and an elite camping kit, which is actually really good. So definitely do that because the elite camping kit is really cool. Uh, then you're going to go to the second merchant. This guy's a little bit smarter, still blind, but uh, he will actually request that uh, it is appraised by Abraham. And obviously you got this from Abraham, so it is not going to be authentic. He knows it is a fake. 
So you're going to have to bribe him. And so once you run over there, you're going to want to talk to Abraham as soon as this dialogue's over. And you're going to try and uh, make sure that he says it's legit. It's a real thing. Otherwise, he's actually calling the guards on you. And that could get really ugly. But they're going to have a quick chat. They're going to talk about, hey, what is, what's going to happen? You're going to talk to Abraham real quick and be like, hey, man, here's some gold. Here's a thousand. Hey, hey say, say this is a fake. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Two thousand gold. Please, please, please. No? Okay, 3,000 maybe? 3,000? I'm hearing 3,000? This guy is just robbing us. We've already paid for this appraisal. He's still not taking 3,000, so you actually have to give him another 6,000. So that's 12,000 gold plus the 600. You actually paid 12,600 gold for this. Uh, he does then say he's going to fake it for you. But then you're going to go back to the merchant. He is bringing the city guard with him. Uh, and then he's going to go get it verified and it's going to clear. He's proud. You're an arisen. Thank you so much for the genuine article. It's totally a fake. Oh, well, give me my prize. And, uh, you know, we paid 12,000. So what does he give us? 12,000. So it, it's kind of unfortunate. We wish we could get more. So we actually added a loss of 600, but he also gives us a ring of skulldudgery, uh, which is pretty cool. I would suggest if you actually care about the, the silver, the gold, give him the authentic one because I haven't found any other purpose for the Jedi Orb, but I personally just love collecting everything, so I'm keeping it. But uh, that is how you do that first little side quest. If you gave that imitation orb to that vendor, the, the second merchant, and you brought the city watch and you didn't bribe Ibrahim, tell me what happened. I, well, I'm very curious. I'll definitely check it out on my next playthrough, but please comment below if you did that. I do read every comment that goes through and I try to reply to every single one. So I uh, really appreciate if someone would fill me in on what happens there. Let's move on to all of the cool forgeries, starting with the part crystal, which is the forgery of the port crystal. This is really what got me started on this whole idea that I'm going to go make a forgery of everything because obviously fast travel is a very important thing. Everyone's whining about how there's not enough. Well, what if we could make a forgery of the port crystal and then we'd be able to have infinite number of fast travels? Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually help. It's really just something that looks identical. Now, with that, there are some really cool strategies that you can do because it is an identical imitation, and I'll get into that later, but it costs 60,000 for the first one and then 20,000 for any additional ones. The next one I want to try was fairy stones. Obviously, being able to fast travel is super important. Maybe the fairy stones would work. Uh, but obviously, I've already mentioned earlier that it makes a fairy stone with an eye and it doesn't work. Next, I decided to let's do a seeker's token. These are so hard to find sometimes and getting 220 is actually quite the task. So if I could just reproduce these, it'd make that so much easier. Unfortunately, it gives you a cedar's token, which cannot be turned in at the guild. I then wanted to see if I could get unlimited carry weight with the golden trove beetles. Unfortunately, these gave you a golden stove beetle, not useful. I then had the massive breakthrough of the eternal wake stones. I decided to take a risk, put in 30,000 to get this going. I took my little nap, I came back and it gave me two eternal wake stones. I was absolutely crazed. This is just incredible because if you know how to get this, that you can only do it once per playthrough. And what this item does is it revives like entire cities. It's crazy. It has a huge AOE effect to just revive everything. So immediately after that, I decided, hey, I'm going to get a whole bunch of these. And before checking, my, my, my strategy was I was actually going to be putting these as a pond quest reward. And I'll talk more about what I do and, and why I love forgery so much later about how they interact with pond quests. But unfortunately, you can't use eternal wake stones as a pond quest reward. So I wasted a whole bunch of money getting 22 of these. Uh, and I guess I'm ready. OK, if people start dying, I'm going to be there to pick them up. But I have 22 wake stones just on standby now which is cool but unnecessary and it was just too expensive so then i wanted to see okay can i get a regular wake stone i mean this would be cool just to have unlimited those then i can carry a whole bunch i never die never have to worry about any problems really uh and i can always just keep reviving i can take on dragons forever easy day unfortunately 
this does not give you a wake stone. Instead, it gives you a woke stone, which cannot revive you, unfortunately. The next few items are part of a spoiler around the Sphinx. So if you don't want to hear that, feel free to pause and, and skip the next few items. Uh, the first one will be the Unmaking Arrow, which you do get as a reward from one of the riddles. This will literally kill anything instantly. However, when you make a forgery, you get an unmasking arrow, which cannot instant kill anything. Another cool thing, this is off topic, is that you can shoot the unmaking arrow at the Gigantus and it will take all of his pillars out and will stop him for the actual main storyline. But if you're trying to get the Gigantus, I hardly knew ye, there's a different way to do it. And I share that later in this video. Continuing with the special Sphinx items with the ceiling file, uh, this is another cool one where it can collect uh, an NPC and carry them around. So decided to throw that in there. I'm waiting for it to come uh, the next day to pick it up. And unfortunately it gives you a ceiling file. Not useful, uh, cannot be uh, used in the same way. Last item from the Sphinx is the Key of Sagidi, uh, which actually opens that massive chest and gives you the only eternal wake stone you'll get during the playthrough. And what's cool is uh, you, you, I had to go all the way back just to make this, but they actually had a special name for the fake, which is the Key of Mendicity. I actually used it on the, the main chest to see if I could save the Key of Sagidi, uh, and unfortunately it doesn't work. Don't try that. I then wanted to see how consumables worked in this way, so I added a ripened apple. And that surprised me because it actually gave me another ripened apple back, which made me very curious about the next one, which is a little bit of a spoiler, so uh, definitely skip if you don't want this, but the preserved Medusa head. Uh, I thought, okay, maybe I can keep getting a whole bunch of preserved Medusa heads. This is gonna be crazy if I can just keep pumping these out. I don't have to go and chop her head off, which is, really difficult even with a thief class. Uh, this could be a really cool way to just duplicate these. Unfortunately, it actually reduces to a regular Medusa head and then gives you a decayed Medusa head that cannot even cast once. If you're struggling to get that preserved Medusa head, I do suggest getting a thief class with a lightning boon. Uh, and then you'll also equip the ring that does no damage and then just keep attacking her head and eventually it'll fall off. But it is a pain to get her head off. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some more guides out on that and I might even make one in the future. So hit that subscribe button and hopefully we can all have a whole bunch of preserved Medusa heads in the future because that is how you get the achievement Gigantus. I hardly knew ye. You, you pull out that Medusa head. It is a pain to get that head over here in a decent state. Even if you have it preserved, you don't like pull it out at all except your inventory you have to use some fast travel mechanics i'll probably do another video on this but this is the only way you can take down the colossus and get that uh achievement and, and it's really interesting because at first i didn't think it was working he's still moving but he is slowly solidifying and he's turning to stone and then he freezes it took a whole medusa head i'm not sure that you could do it uh, with just a regular medusa head you need to use a preserved by the way, you cannot climb on it when it is in rock form uh, or stone form, I should say. So don't try that either, but it will fall down and you will get that achievement. It is a harder one, so good luck with that, but it, is, it feels good to get that one for sure. The next ones I want to talk about are spell books. If you do request a forgery of these, you do not get the actual incantation. You can't use it, but there is a incredible use for this when you are trying to get the maesters, the master teachings, the master skills for the sorcery class. Usually you'd need uh, four or five of these books per person. You turn them in and then they will give you one of the special skills. I'm not going to go into that whole tutorial. Feel free. I've left a link for um, a full one for you if you want to use it, but you can actually use this forgery mechanic to create five books for this, and then you'll be able to do both Maester's teachings in one playthrough, getting Meteor and Whirlwind spells, which are really, really cool. And once you do have those counterfeits, you can go to the Sorcerer that's here and Rest Checkpoint Town, give him the books. I, I give him the counterfeits. You wanna give him the counterfeits for sure. And I only needed four to get his Maester's teaching. So that, that's all I needed to do for that one. And then after that, uh, you're gonna go up north to uh, pass up above Melv, and you're gonna go to the little girl and deliver the four actual tomes to her. And she actually took it and it still gave me that ma maester's teaching. Another book you're gonna wanna make a counterfeit of is the On um, the Transference of Souls 2, which you buy from the scrapyard. You'll have find this item vendor in Bak Patal who is trying to use it to improve his family and he thinks that it will be better. Unfortunately, if you use the real one, 
he comes back and his family is nothing but dust. So quite sad uh, result there. You don't want to use the real one there. You do get a ring of disfavor, but uh, you get this somewhere else. So all it does is make you more likely to be targeted. Uh, instead, if you give him the counterfeit on the transit of souls to uh, this results in a much better outcome. Everyone survives. And then eventually you're going to get 16,000 gold, which I think is a big W there compared to that ring, uh, because you can get that ring uh, elsewhere. Like I said, at least I got it somewhere. I don't remember where I got it from. But hey, if you're liking this video or finding the content useful, I ask that you please hit that like button. And if you want to see more guides, tips, and content around Dragon's Dogma 2, please smash the subscribe button and help this small channel grow. I want to be out there uh, getting early access. I, I didn't for Dragon's Dogma 2, and it's kind of hard to compete to get some of these big influencers. They're popping out videos instantly, but I feel that this video has a purpose. It, it hits a little niche, and I hope you found this useful. But moving on to the next item, which is the God's Bane Sword. This is a little super late game, pretty much end of the game. Uh, so if you don't want to see that, definitely skip through to the next item. But basically, once you turn in the Worm Crystal, you get the Empowered God's Bane Sword, and it's an item instead of a sword in, in the classification. So I figured we'd be able to actually do something with it. Unfortunately, you can't. So that was really sad. And I also tried if you could just use the God's Bane early to trigger the end game. Uh, and unfortunately, that doesn't work either. So if you're trying to do a speed run, that is not going to save you any time. God, you're just going to die. <laughs> The next item I wanted to check out was the Dragon's Gaze. Uh, this is a really cool item that'll uh, point out any wake uh, stone shards that are nearby. Uh, and so I decided to, you know, go ahead and test that one out. I, I gave it to uh, Abraham and, uh, you know, he actually makes the Dragon's Gauze. It not, doesn't work, uh, unfortunately. It's another one that's just not quite there, but maybe you could give it to someone as a fake item. I was then curious about, could I replicate the different uh, skill handbooks? Then I can use that as a gift for our pawns and make it really desirable. Uh, unfortunately, this only makes a counterfeit as well. Uh, could still be used. And, and once again, we'll talk more about the strategies of how to use pawn quest later. But uh, that is a very interesting thing that you can do. Uh, they're all different names, like the Pilferer's Handbook, the Pesterer's Handbook. So not quite the same. I then wanted to try out the Mirror Mercolian card. Uh, this is to get into the brothel. Uh, and I'm, I'm not, I haven't found a use for it, but it actually makes a copy. So this could be pretty useful later on. And I'm very, very curious if uh, there's someone who's going to come up to me like, hey, I really want to get in there, but I don't have a card. I'll pay you, you know, 100,000 coins or something. Really nice to know. Uh, so that's why I have made a copy of that. I'm on standby. If you know what, what the use of this card is, please comment below. I then made a copy of the makeshift vault key. You can also do this with the jail, the makeshift jail key. It does work there. Uh, um, but uh, I'm not sure what the value of the vault key is yet because I think there's only one vault door. But I'm curious if you found another one or if you think there's some other use for this. Uh, please let me know if you have any ideas there. Similarly, you can do it with the resident permit uh, or even the pass to go through the gate. Those are both uh, options that you can actually make a copy of. It's direct copy. Uh, maybe there's a vendor somewhere who's trying to get through and they, they can't or they lost their permit. Uh, if you found that, that side quest, let me know. Definitely want to be able to provide that. So that's why I made copies of those as well. I uh, pretty much just made copies of everything. Like it's, I, I'm becoming a hoarder. It's, it's terrible. And then wanted to test out multiple materials to see, can we make constant copies of them um and so the first one i tested was gold ore and yes you can make a copy i then went on to the sumerian tales yes those work as well and i started bouncing around a whole bunch of different options all the way till i got to like dragon skills and even dragon skills you can duplicate this is huge uh, for any of the late game uh, weapons that you're trying to upgrade, this makes it super easy. Uh, I know that I actually was looking for a maim for my staff, which you had to target a chimera, but I needed a black freakish maim, so I had to find the rare version, which was just not spawning. I'd killed like, I don't know, five or six chimera, and I could not get it. So this is what made it really helpful to just be able to copy it. I had one already, made the second I could upgrade my staff all the way. Another good way to find those late game items is to have a pawn with the Forager specialization. This is really, really key. Uh, I think it's probably the best specialization in the game. I actually have it on my pawn. You can find the details below. But uh, what, you, what I do, I go search. Let's say I'm trying to get a sorcerer. 
I'll search for it. I'll then um, you know add any of the other specific filters, and then I'll go to the specialization quest tab, and I'll mark four of those that find I find interesting. Maybe I'll look at the pawn quest real quick on, on here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and try to do a little interview. Um, when I'm interviewing, you know, I'm checking out uh, their, their stats, making sure they have good equipment, and then checking the rest of their uh, vocation and, and skills and whatever. Once that's all done, we hire them. And when we're in the situation where we don't know where to find uh, certain materials to upgrade our stuff, like in this case, I don't have the Spurs wings. I don't remember where that was. I think it's some harpy, but I don't know which one it is. What I can quickly do is back out, remove all of my equipment, except for that one item that I'm interested in. So in this case, I'm on my thorn back. He's got his Medusa spell bow. That's what I wanna uh, upgrade. So I'm gonna go back to my map with my forager. I'm gonna quickly, you know, click on these. Okay, that's an ogre town. I already have enough of those. Oh, Spurs wing right there. Uh, and so that's where you can quickly find, okay, that's where units of those spawn. Note that you can actually differentiate between the Arisen and your main pawn. Main pawn's on the right column, and then the Arisen would be on the left column. And then you can quickly find what you need, and if you can't, just go make a forgery of the first item, and you're going to be good to go. There is one caveat with that, and that is with the Worms Life Crystals, uh, which do not actually give you a duplicate, which is super unfortunate because we know these are super important for upgrading your equipment and buying some of the new uh, late game gear, but it only gives you a worm's life crystal. I have to say that they did a great job of changing up the naming conventions for the counterfeits. I also tried out a bunch of the different potions, seeing how they work. And uh, it's actually quite interesting because all of the potions will actually duplicate. And this is all the way up to all heal elixirs, which is absolutely wild, especially if you've been in the end game. You know, every night you camp is, is time that you're losing. Using an all heal just to bring you back to full HP is huge to progress, and then you'll be able to explore so much further. Uh, really, really powerful. And it also includes Newt Liquor, uh, which is also really, really important for the Wayfarer vocation. Um, if you know, you know. But uh, yeah, you can just literally duplicate that instead of doing it the other way to get it, which can be a little bit more tedious. Another important feature of the forgeries are being able to duplicate the rare gemstones like the onyx, um, having those three gemstones available and in plentiful uh, supply is really important for getting everyone's affection to just really love you. Uh, this is also really helpful at the late game as well as just being able to get a whole bunch of presents. And this also includes bunches of flowers, uh, which is really helpful in handing those out. They are not cost effective though. Uh, if, if you can pick up the flowers, that is a very, very uh, more effective way. Otherwise it costs 1500 per bunch of flowers. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest that, but once you do start getting all of these people to love you, you're just gonna be rolling in presents. Make sure to check all of your houses uh, periodically because you'll just start getting gifts from literally everyone. And uh, some of these can be nice wake stones or just uh, different ores and uh, materials, which is all kind of nice and, and it helps you know pay back for what you're spending because it is pretty expensive to make these gifts and there's no real good econ method that I've found in the forgery quite yet. And just some tips on gift giving in general, I'll probably make a video on this because it's actually pretty complex. Uh, you can use the uh, bars and buy around for people to help also, but I've given counterfeits, I've given real items, and I found that all of the counterfeits don't really raise the affinity. Like I've given uh, some guard, like the same fairy stone, the fake one, many, many times, and it just wouldn't raise, but then I give him uh, just two of the fairy, like the actual fairy stone, suddenly he's my best friend. And you know, you can always tell by the cheeks, they'll turn red like that, and then he's super happy to see and so that's super exciting and then you can also check in the status you go to the adventure log book and you'll be able to see what status uh, the what npcs have reached max affinity i would suggest waiting until you have both the ring of eternal bond this helps build up your affection even stronger and then the uh, lure augment from trickster is the last one so you have to build up the, all the way but that'll also help and then that way you'll be able to convert people more efficiently and the last item I'm gonna go over is the Harpy Snare Smoke Beacon. This one's really cool because you can actually duplicate it as well. And you can't find these like anywhere, at least I haven't. So this is really the only way to, to generate them. Maybe I've seen it in a vendor, rare, real rare occasions. But uh, yeah, you can summon a Harpy and then you can ride it to some loot far away. And I'm just a loot goblin, so I'm all about trying to get 
all those really cool chests that are hidden and you just can't get to them unless you use a harpy so that's really cool uh just mechanic they added and this is how you get that achievement to ride a harpy you summon it and then you ride it and that's how you're able to get some of these cool treasure chests really far away i would suggest uh being light so push all your equipment to someone else that way it takes less stamina to hold on but uh, once you get over there you'll be able to collect any cool items so let's go ahead and jump into the strategies i would suggest starting with your materials any materials you're using always keep one you want to have that one just as a backup in case you're trying to find a super rare item let's say it's a fell lore bone or that freakish uh, meme that i was looking for the black freakish meme uh it, sometimes they just don't spawn and it's like ah oh, as many times as you come there for their spawn point uh it just won't give you the more rare version of that creature so definitely uh just keep one on standby that way you know if you do like five of them you'll have enough gold just make a copy you'll be good to go so that's the first one. Second is the lux items uh once again those onyx uh, the other two crystals those are the best way to build affection in almost every case that i've found you're going to want to make those as your copies don't use those for anything else don't sell them i wouldn't at least uh, and then i'd make copies and use those for uh making people love you i think that's really important there the third one is in potions uh, specifically the all heal elixir you're going to want to make a whole bunch of those for the end game so don't use all your all heal elixirs because they're kind of hard to find but you can craft them also maybe i'll do a video on crafting as well there's some really cool things you can craft um but then in general selling uh and, and trying to make an economy out of the forgery i cannot find anything if you found something that is actually more profitable to 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 create a forgery and then sell it let me know every time it seems like you make a forgery it costs more than the cost of uh just creating one so you can never sell it back to a vendor and and if you try to sell it to a vendor those are always lower prices it sucks uh like so i, I really don't know what to do there um but there might be something somewhere in there or some vendor that has different pricing i just haven't found let me know if you find it uh the last one is on the pawn quest and this is where it gets really fun and this is what i've been abusing and i'm sorry if you fell for my deceptions but i like to set my pawn quest and if you don't know how to set a pawn quest you go into the uh the rift talk to your pawn or uh, on the menu you'll be able to set a pawn quest and this is where you can ask for a badge or items and then you can give them a item or gold and a lot of people give 10,000 gold that's really um you know lucrative for people or you do what I do, and that's what you, you put, you give them a part crystal. And it, sorry for anyone out there who, who got conned, but uh, it's a fake. It's not the real one, and it cost me 20000 to remake it, and I ask for nine worm crystals. And then this is huge, because uh, even if I wanted to buy those, it'd be 45000 to to get those from this vendor just north of Vermont. Uh, you'll be able to find him uh, or her going back and forth right there. Now that concludes this video. I hope you found something useful in here about the forgeries. It's a really cool system. I had a lot of fun with it. If you liked this video, please smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time at Caveman Logging Off.